I'm Carl Franklin, and on this episode of Blazor Train, we'll dive into WebAssembly. What is it? Is it secure? How does it work? What browsers support it? What languages can compile to it? Can it only run in the browser? And we'll answer the question, is Blazor Wasm the next Silverlight? That's all happening right now, right here on Blazor Train. Blazor Train! WebAssembly, or WASM, isn't a language, and it's not a compiler. It's an environment. It's a virtual machine, a target for compilers, just like Windows, Mac OS, iOS, or Android. It provides a way to run code written in multiple languages on the web at near native speed. So right off the bat, we need to talk about security. Code running in WASM can't interact with the DOM directly. Here's a quote from the WebAssembly docs at Mozilla. By itself, WebAssembly cannot currently directly access the DOM. It can only call JavaScript, passing in integer and floating point primitive data types. Thus, to access any web API, WebAssembly needs to call out to JavaScript, which then makes the web API call. If I was to write a WASM app with a language like C, I couldn't just find an element on the page and modify it. I'd have to write a JavaScript function to access the DOM and then call that function from WASM. That fundamental architectural decision means that any code compiled to WASM can only interact with the world outside of WASM via JavaScript. So if JavaScript can't do it, neither can WASM. I can't stress enough how important it is to understand this basic idea. According to caniuse.com, WASM is supported by Edge version 16 and higher, Firefox version 52 and higher, Chrome version 57 and higher, Safari version 11 and higher, Opera version 44 and higher, iOS Safari version 11 and higher, Android browser version 81 and higher, Opera mobile version 46 and higher, Chrome for Android version 81 and higher, Firefox for Android version 68 and higher, and Samsung Internet version 7.2 and higher. Yeah, that pretty much covers it, doesn't it? All right, let's talk about ASM.js. Before WASM became dominant in this space, there was a subset of JavaScript, and there still is, called ASM.js that can act as a compiler target for languages other than JavaScript. In fact, up until 2018, Microsoft had planned to use ASM.js as a fallback for browsers that didn't support WebAssembly in Blazor. Two things happened. First, it was clear that ASM.js performance-wise just wasn't good enough for the Blazor team. Secondly, more browsers were supporting WASM than ASM.js, so Microsoft removed support for ASM.js. Now, Internet Explorer never supported ASM.js, and it never supported WASM. They stopped working on it before this stuff started working. Now, Microsoft recommends that if you want to run Blazor apps with IE, you can use a polyfill and run Blazor server applications, no problem. So what languages compile into WASM? Well, according to this curated list, as of today, May 20th, 2020, there are over 40 languages. Those include C, C++, COBOL, Elixir, Go, Java, JavaScript, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, Rust, Swift, TypeScript, and of course, C Sharp and F Sharp via Blazor. There is also a tool called AssemblyScript that compiles a strict subset of TypeScript to WebAssembly. Most of these languages are compiled directly to WASM binaries and therefore don't have the benefit of a runtime environment like .NET does. Even Java currently doesn't have a native WASM JVM. The language is compiled directly to WASM. You know, there's a discussion afoot to introduce garbage collection to WASM, which would allow any language to enjoy the benefits of a runtime that C Sharp currently has. It also includes a proposal to allow WASM to make API calls directly. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that one. There are discussions about how WASM can run in environments outside the browser. 
These quotes come from WebAssembly.org. While WebAssembly is designed to run on the web, it is also desirable for it to be able to execute well in other environments, including everything from minimal shells for testing to full-blown application environments, for example, on servers and data centers, on IoT devices, or mobile and desktop apps. It may even be desirable to execute WebAssembly embedded within larger programs. Non-web environments may provide different APIs than web environments, which feature testing and dynamic linking will make discoverable and usable. Non-web environments may include JavaScript VMs like Node.js. However, WebAssembly is also being designed to be capable of being executed without a JavaScript VM present. In general, by keeping the non-web path such that it doesn't require web APIs, WebAssembly could be used as a portable binary format on many platforms, bringing great benefits in portability, tooling, and language agnosticity, since it supports C and or C++ level semantics. There's also an interesting group of people trying to bring WASM outside the browser to interface directly with operating systems that it lives on. This is called WASI or WebAssembly System Interface. This is a subgroup of the W3C's WebAssembly Community Group, or CG. As of now, there's a standalone runtime called WASM Time that can be used with compiler tool chains for C, C++, and Rust. Think about a world where we truly have one VM that can run any code on any OS on any platform not just in the browser. Do you think that would fundamentally change the nature of software development? You bet it would. Mscripten is currently the go-to compiler for WASM. In only an hour, with no previous experience with Mscripten, I was able to install the tool chain, write a Hello World app in C, compile it to WASM, and produce an HTML file that loads and runs it. Start here if you want to try it yourself. All right, let's talk performance. In general, code that is compiled will load faster than JavaScript because it doesn't have to be parsed and interpreted. When it comes to execution speed, latency, and throughput, on the whole, WASM is faster than JavaScript. As for Blazor, don't expect high performance just yet. Blazor runs on top of an intermediate language interpreter with no JIT or just-in-time compilation. Sometime in the future, though, Blazor will utilize WebAssembly's ahead-of-time compilation model, but that's probably not going to happen till sometime in the .NET 5 or even .NET 6 timeframe. For now, though, the benefits of Blazor WebAssembly far outweigh the performance issue. Based on where I see WASM going in the future, this is a great time to jump into the pool. Ah, Silverlight. All right, here's the short version. Silverlight is a plugin. Plugins are bad. Plugin support was mostly removed from browsers. Silverlight was no longer viable. It had nothing to do with running C Sharp in the browser. That's good. Plugins bad. WebAssembly, good. WebAssembly, not a plugin. Flash was perhaps the most popular plugin besides Java. There were also plugins like Unity 3D for 3D graphics and games, Google Voice and Video, and of course, Silverlight. Plugins were, they came onto the scene at a time when most browser innovation was going stagnant. By embracing plugins, the browsers could remain on the cutting edge. This was in the days before HTML5 came around and added things like support for graphics, geolocation, storage, audio, video, and touch. So what's the problem with plugins and why did the browsers stop supporting them? Well, first and foremost, security. Flash and Java were the biggest attack vectors for malware. In 2009, Symantec said that Flash was one of the biggest security risks to operating systems because an attack on Flash or Java could reach across all operating systems and platforms because it ran everywhere. Further, most plugins were written using either Microsoft ActiveX, 
And if you're old like me, you probably remember that one. Or NPAPI, the Netscape Plugin Application Programming Interface. NPAPI and ActiveX were both not sandboxed. That means they had complete access to the entire user account and its operating system permissions. Ouch. Another reason that plugins went away was stability. Plugins were a leading cause of crashes, especially when their crashes brought down the browser. Let's consider Apple's position on plugins. Safari iOS has never supported plugins, only extensions, which are based on open standards. In April 2010, Steve Jobs explained why their mobile devices would never support Flash in a white paper called Thoughts on Flash. In that paper, he said Flash was made for PCs. It's proprietary, where the web was all about open standards. It's buggy and insecure. It doesn't support touch. And the video decoder uses much more CPU than H.264, an open standard which HTML5 had completely embraced, and to this day remains the most popular video codec in the world. So the next time someone writes off Blazor WebAssembly, comparing it to Silverlight, send them to this video and I'll set them straight. So now I hope you know a little more about WebAssembly than you did a few minutes ago. Woo! Woo! I gave you a whole bunch of resources, including a tutorial for you to write and run your own WASM apps in C, if you want. We learned that Blazor is not Silverlight, and there are good reasons why Silverlight is no longer a viable option for running C-sharp code in the browser. In the next episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how you can develop both a Blazor server app and a Blazor WebAssembly app from the same code base at the same time. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazor Train!